Did you know Cleopatra, the great queen of ancient Egypt, had four children? What really happened to the two sons of Mark Antony and Cleopatra is one of history's marvelous mysteries. After the death of Alexander the Great, his most loyal generals divided the empire he had conquered, with Ptolemy I Soter claiming Egypt. Cleopatra VII Philippator was born in 69 BCE to Ptolemy XII and presumably Cleopatra V Tryphena. Most people know Cleopatra's demise was tragic, but they gloss over the fact that she was a brilliant leader. She was not an Egyptian herself, but her heart was filled with love for the country she was born in, to the point that she was called Philopatris, she who loves her country, in a papyrus dated back to 35 BCE. Some sources claim that the Library of Alexandria was her second home, and writings from medieval scholars even praised her for her excellence in astronomy, philosophy, and mathematics. Despite her leadership qualities, her story often merges with the triumph and downfall of Rome's most remarkable figures, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Her role is often seen as the seducer, a femme fatale. She was the Egyptian queen who desired power above all. The first thing that comes to mind upon mentioning her name is the myth of her exotic beauty, or perhaps her legendary death, suicide using a poisonous asp. But what happened in the aftermath of her death? Moreover, what happened to her subsequent generations? Cleopatra gave birth to four children, one with Julius Caesar and three with Mark Antony. The intriguing tale of her relationship with the two Roman generals is crucial for context. As a child, Cleopatra had accompanied her father, Ptolemy XII, in his exile and traveled with the Roman expedition to Egypt upon his return. Mark Antony served under Gallienus's command and probably met the future Egyptian queen during the trip. Upon his return, Ptolemy XII proclaimed Ptolemy XIII and Cleopatra as his successors. After his father's death, Ptolemy XIII exiled his sister wife. Incestuous relationships to keep the bloodline pure were common in ancient Egypt. Julius Caesar had arrived in Alexandria to sort out the issue, since a chaotic Egypt would not have been suitable for Rome. Cleopatra snuck past the guards and reached the palace to present her case to Caesar. He did not take long for Caesar to be captivated by the young Egyptian queen. Plutarch suggested that no one could stand before her and not become instantly hypnotized by her persuasive yet diplomatic conversation skills. So, he decided to reinstate her as co-ruler alongside her brother without hesitation. Shortly after this surprise visit, Cleopatra gained another title for herself, Julius Caesar's lover. Perhaps mistress would be the better term, since the 52-year-old Roman general was already married to his wife, Calpurnia. Caesarian, the product of their relationship, was born in 47 BCE. The boy's full name, half Roman, half Macedonian, with perhaps a tiny grain of Egyptian flowing in his blood, was Ptolemy Philippator Philometer Caesar. Still, he would later go by his Greek nickname, Caesarian, or Little Caesar. In 46 BCE, Cleopatra took her young child to the city of Seven Hills, where he would meet his father. However, two years later, Caesar was assassinated. After Caesar's assassination, Cleopatra returned to Egypt with her three-year-old son, whom she declared a co-ruler. When Caesar's will was read aloud, Cleopatra was disappointed that he had not included a public acknowledgement of Caesarian as his heir. His name was not on the document, nor was Mark Antony's, even though he had been Caesar's most trusted protege and the one who was supposed to be next in command by rank. Instead, Caesar named his grandnephew, whom he had adopted as his successor. The 18-year-old Gaius Octavius, better known today as Octavian or Augustus, was given three-fourths of Caesar's wealth and, of course, his valuable name. To some, especially the 39-year-old Mark Antony, he was no one but a teenager who had come to claim Julius Caesar's fortune and his mighty name. However, by the twist of fate, the two, along with Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, formed the second triumvirate. Octavian and Mark Antony set about to punish Julius Caesar's assassins. After a series of wars and clashes, the Avengers emerged victorious. Mark Antony was hailed for his victories, while Octavian, who was said to be ill almost the entire time of the battle, was less esteemed. In the very same year, they split their powers over the Mediterranean. Octavian headed west and Antony embarked on a journey to the east in search of a way to raise funds for his next campaign.
which resulted in him crossing paths with the Egyptian queen herself. Cleopatra's troops had failed to reinforce Mark Antony and Octavian during the wars, so she was hesitant when Mark Antony expressed the need to meet her. According to Plutarch, the Cleopatra who had met Caesar years prior was utterly different from the one about to present herself to Antony. She was still an inexperienced queen when she first captured Caesar's heart, but now she was at her utmost brilliance. Cleopatra boarded her massive galley with hundreds of other ships carrying supplies and gifts behind her. Cleopatra's grand entrance on the shores of Tarsus impressed Mark Antony. The two cleared up political misunderstandings and exchanged favors. Mark Antony wanted Egyptian money, and Cleopatra wanted to expand the borders of her empire. In the winter of 41 BCE, Queen Cleopatra returned to her golden city with Mark Antony in tow. Whether the queen was the one who invited him to see her city, or if Mark Antony decided to tag along remains unknown. In the city, the two lovebirds bonded and spent days in each other's company. They played dice, went hunting, laughed at each other's jokes, and drank. By 40 BCE, Cleopatra found out she was pregnant with Antony's child. This time, she had a pair of twins in her womb, whom she named Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene II. However, the queen was believed to have given birth to the twins without her lover by her side. She had to endure this situation for almost three and a half years. Meanwhile, Mark Antony married his fourth wife, Octavia the Younger, the elder sister of Octavian, as a gesture of alliance with Octavian. In 37 BCE, a messenger arrived at the city gates of Alexandria. The messenger claimed that Antony had personally requested Cleopatra to meet him in Antioch. Upon meeting, the Roman general gifted some of his territories to Cleopatra. He gave her the island of Cyprus, a region that even Caesar failed to grant her, along with Coele Syria, Cyrene, Cilicia, and Crete. Within mere moments, the Egyptian queen almost had the entire eastern Mediterranean in her grasp. Mark Antony wanted to rule the east through Cleopatra's lineage. A year after their reunion, the two bore another son, Cleopatra's fourth and last child and Antony's seventh known as Ptolemy Philadelphus. In 34 BCE, Mark Antony granted some eastern lands to Caesarion and his three children with Cleopatra. Mark Antony's distrust of Octavian never went away. His proclamation of Caesarion as the true successor of Caesar did not bode well either. As the tides of fate turned again, the two faced off in the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. Octavian managed to conquer Alexandria, causing the two lovers to commit suicide. Cleopatra knew that her notoriety in Rome, driven by her adulterous relationship with Caesar, would not bode well for young Caesarion. So, the 17-year-old boy was dispatched to a seaport on the western shore of the Red Sea. She probably thought he could escape to India or perhaps the Middle East. Octavian sent emissaries to Caesarion, promising him the title of Roman client king. While initially distrustful, Caesarion finally agreed to go back in 30 BCE. While accurate documentation of his death is sparse, he was probably strangled by Roman soldiers. With his death, the lineage of Ptolemaic pharaohs fizzled out. During the donations of Alexandria in 34 BCE, Cleopatra and Caesarion were not the only recipients of lands and titles. The Antonian gift extended to his children with Cleopatra, the twins Alexandra Helios and Cleopatra Selene II, and the youngest, Ptolemy XVI Philadelphus. He bestowed Armenia, Media, Parthia, and territories beyond the Euphrates River to Alexander Helios. Cyrenaica and Libya he bestowed to his twin sister. He also granted Syria, Phoenicia, and Cilicia to Ptolemy XVI. The donation stirred tensions in Rome, as Octavian could not let the bloodline of Caesar rise to the throne. However, after Caesarion's death, Octavian was not threatened by the idea of potential usurpers. So, when he conquered Egypt, he took the twins and the youngest son to Rome. He paraded the three children in the narrow streets of Rome. The image of three orphans bearing the weight of heavy chains and dragging their heels evoked sympathy from the Romans. Octavian's sister, Mark Antony's fourth wife, was particularly struck with compassion. Renowned for her virtue and wisdom, she reared the children out of the kindness of her heart. Since she was Mark Antony's wife, she considered herself a stepmother to Cleopatra's children. Cleopatra Selene II and her two brothers spent the next few years under her roof. When Cleopatra Selene was 15, she was married to a North African king, 
Juba II of Numidia. After Julius Caesar had defeated Juba I, his father, in 46 BCE and turned Numidia into a Roman province, he brought the orphan to Rome. In his youth, he had accompanied Octavian on several military campaigns, including the Battle of Actium. After their marriage, Juba and Selene had two children, Ptolemy of Mauritania and another daughter whose name is unknown. Mauritania was an ancient region comprised of modern-day Algeria and Morocco that Octavia had conferred upon the couple. Juba and Cleopatra Selene ruled the region for two decades until her death. The exact date and year of her death are unknown. However, most estimates point to sometime between 5 BCE and 8 CE. Her husband and son continued to rule Mauritania as joint rulers until Juba II died in 23 CE. The son, Ptolemy of Mauritania, took over the helm from the father and led the kingdom until Emperor Caligula had him executed. Ptolemy had no successors, so Emperor Claudius brought Mauritania under direct Roman control. As for her two brothers, there is little to no record of them after their arrival at Rome. Most historians, including Plutarch and Suetonius, state that Octavian only killed one child of Mark Antony, Marcus Antonius Antillus. Cassius Dio agrees that the assessment and claims that Octavian spared the lives of Alexander Helios and Ptolemy Philadelphus as a favor to Cleopatra Selene II and Juba II. Another ancient author, Herodian of Antioch, claims that the children were lavished with wealth and secluded on an island, probably Sicily, to keep them detached from the currents of political intrigue. Regardless of speculation on the part of ancient historians, Alexander Helios and Ptolemy Philadelphus disappeared from history after they arrived in Rome. There is some speculation that Cleopatra Selene took Ptolemy Philadelphus to Mauritania. Others think he died from illness in 29 BCE. The child mortality rate was relatively high then, so one or both of her brothers possibly did not witness adulthood. These and various other educated guesses exist. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Cleopatra, check out our book, Cleopatra, a captivating guide to the last queen of ancient Egypt and her relationships with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.